Welcome to our midweek Bible study. Much is going on around us and we miss and are praying for each one of you as the restrictions that we find are, are still in place. A reminder to everyone, if you have a prayer request or a need, please feel free to contact me at the church and leave a message or contact me at our house on my cell phone. If it's a prayer request, we will be putting it on the one call system on our prayer chain. Please don't hesitate to call either myself, Denise, or Kit if you have a prayer request. I believe as a church family, as Christians, we need to be praying. We need to earnestly be praying for our nation, the world, and those that have been affected with the virus. I, I think of many throughout this nation and throughout this world as we, we think about this virus and just the many people that have either had it or those that have had loved ones that have passed away. But we also need to remember to be praying for the president and the vice president and the team around him that are deciding much as this goes on. We need to be holding them up in prayer. It has to be one of the, as he has said, one of the hardest decisions he's ever had to make in his life concerning starting this nation back up. But we need to be in prayer for him and our vice president and that team. We also need to be praying for governments, both state and local. We think of our governors of our states and the, the local uh, governments that we are under the authority of within our own counties and townships and the many different people that, that are involved in, in uh, authority and in government. We also need to remember those in prayer on the front lines. We need to be thinking about the doctors and nurses, the health care providers. I also want us to think about the nursing homes, the residents in those nursing homes, the health care workers at these homes that are taking care of them. You know, many of us have loved ones or have had loved ones that have been nursing, that have been in nursing homes or maybe retirement homes. So we need to be praying for them. We also need to be praying for those that are still working. There are many that their work is called an essential business, and they're working and have been working straight through this. We need to pray for their protection. A group of individuals that many times we forget about, but we run by maybe on the road, or we see them from time to time, or maybe a family member is, is in this group, and that's the truck drivers. The truck drivers are important people to us. Not only are they husbands, not only are they relatives or parts of our family, but they are supplying all the needs that we have as far as our the needs and getting the products to the different stores. So we need to be praying for them. We also need to be praying for those that just differs, that deliver supplies throughout. We need to also be praying for the, the ones that are working in stores in different areas like that. And I'm sure I've missed many, but we need to be praying as a church family, for those that uh, are out there working each and every day away from their homes. A group we also need to be praying for is our missionaries. Our missionaries in the foreign fields, whether it be overseas or it be right here in the United States. They are also dealing with this virus and it's of much concern to them as it is to us. So we need to be praying for their protection. Our own families. I've been calling around in our church family and we're praising God that no one is sick and no one has the virus that, that we know of, but we are praising God for the protection that He has given to our families. We need to be praying for our families. We need to be praying for our church family. Those within our communities, those that live around us, maybe our next door neighbor, maybe that person that lives down the road from us. We need to be praying for them. Those without Christ also as their Savior, that we are reaching out to them and we're willing to share the gospel with them and be willing to share it confidently. So there are a lot of things that we need to be praying for and I, I would just ask that you continue in prayer. Continue to pray for your pastor as this again is not the normal, not what he's used to, but we are praising God for 
how this is being able to be broadcast, how it is being able to be transmitted, and how it, uh, for technology, and the importance of it that it's found at a time like this. So let's have a, a word of prayer tonight. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, we thank you for this evening, and dear Lord, as we come to a time of, of midweek Bible study, I pray, dear Lord, that we would continue to look to you. And dear Lord, I pray that we would be um, continually praying for those in authority over us, from the President and his staff and the Vice President, and um, we just pray for wisdom for them. We pray as a nation that we would come alongside of them. And dear Lord, we just pray for those in government, from the president clean down to those that are over us in the townships, the boroughs that we live in. And dear Lord, I also pray for those on the front lines. I think of the doctors and the nurses and the health care providers. I think of those within nursing homes, the residents there, dear Lord, for their protection and those taking care of them. I also think of those, uh, there are many that are still working, even within our church family. Dear Lord, we lift them up to you as they go to work each and every day as an essential business during this time. We pray for their protection. I also think of the truck drivers, and dear Lord, we have truck drivers in our, our church family. I pray not only for their safety on a daily basis as they're on the road and providing and, and delivering product to, to stores and to different places. I also pray for their protection, dear Lord, and guidance and wisdom through this time. I also think of those working in stores, whether it be grocery stores or whatever type of store that is still working, dear Lord, we pray for their protection as they come in contact daily with many, many different people. We also pray for our missionaries, dear Lord, and whether they're overseas or out of this country or in this country, dear Lord, we pray for each and every one of them as they are around other people. And dear Lord, as they're ministering the word of God, that you would guide and direct in their lives. And dear Lord, we ask for protection there. We also think of our families. Dear Lord, the, the dear ones in our families, those that uh, we hold dear in our hearts, we also pray for them. Dear Lord, and I thank and praise you uh, as talking to people that we don't have anybody currently in our church family or their families that uh, have come down with this virus. But dear Lord, we just pray for their continued protection. I also think of our, our church family, dear Lord, and we pray for them, each and every one of them. Dear Lord, that uh, we may be able to, in the, in the future, be able soon to come back and, and to be together be united together as one, not only through you, but be able to come back to the church building and to uh, have fellowship together in the church building. We also pray for the communities that we live in. And dear Lord, we all live in communities, whether we have neighbors across the street from us or beside us or down the road or down the road several miles. Each and every one of us live in a community and we pray for the safety within those communities. We pray for protection and guidance in those communities also. We also pay, pray that we would be a, a light in our communities that we live in and be willing to share the gospel with those that uh, are asking or those that are maybe never before have, have asked questions about uh, spiritual things. And dear Lord, help us to be able to address them and to, again, be a witness and a testimony for them, to them. And dear Lord, we just pray for our time together in our Bible study tonight as we uh, look at some things, look at your word concerning these times in our life. And as we apply them to our lives, dear Lord, I hope and pray that we are looking to you for guidance and direction at times like these. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you by nature one, uh, one that goes with the flow, with whatever happens? Or do you like to plan? Do you like to plan and, and, and work at the plans that you've made? You know, something most don't like is very much change in their life. 
you know, all of us at time to time don't like to have those changes in our life or have something that changes our life. And I read a story about a man that at one time was the oldest living American. And I'd like to share that story with you. The gentleman's name was Charlie Smith. Charlie Smith was 23 years old when the Civil War ended. He was 61 when the Wright brothers first flew. In 1977, he was recognized as the oldest living American of all times. When asked about his secret for longevity, he said, I ain't got no special secret how long I, or how I live so long. I just live. Smith avoided exercise. I don't do much now. I just sit here and when I get tired of sitting, I get up. And when I get tired of that, I sit down. And that was found in an article back in 1978. An article in the People's Almanac. You know, I don't know anything more about this man than he's, his statements, but it sounds as though he was not a fan of change. And we can be there too. And maybe as you're listening tonight, you are one of those that, that don't like a lot of change in your life. With the changes all around us and with Easter being different than any other year that I have ever experienced, I've considered how we should respond. In our time together, we're going to look at God's Word concerning when our plans change. And I'm sure that's a question that maybe you've asked yourself over the past few weeks or the past month or maybe even the past day. You know, how do I, how do I act? What, what do I do when, when life, is, life changes? You know, there's nothing like changes in one's plans to reveal how we truly handle change. For many of us, change is something at times we don't deal with very good. And can I use the words we struggle with it? Or maybe you know of someone that when plans change, they just go with the flow. There's not too many people like that today because I think we fall in that first group where we, we don't handle change very well. You know, many of us plan ahead for what we think is going to happen. Maybe we were planning a week ahead or a month ahead, and I know many were planning for birthday parties and graduations, maybe even vacations this summer, or maybe an upcoming appointment or even surgery was in your plans. Then the COVID-19 virus came along, and all of us that had made our own plans found them simply falling apart. For the past few weeks, we've had to change plans or thoughts that we had and have to stay at home and travel, travel sparingly to the store. Our kids are now at home doing school and, and wondering what's going to take place next. In fact, we've just heard over the past week that school was not going to take up again this year. And I'm sure the kids are wondering, as long, along with parents, are wondering what's going to happen next. When the announcement came out that we were restricted in, in what we could do, our plans changed. To say the least, at first it was hard to deal with a change in plans. Well, especially when we may have had planned or, or were getting together with others. I think of this past Easter Sunday, this past week, and not being able to get together as a church family. And then I also think of families that for many times we get together on Easter and for the first time they're not able to get together. But I do want to remind us, as hard as that was, we're here and pinch yourself, we're still alive. Changes for all of us at times cause stress. Maybe it's caused stress in your life or in your family. They cause struggles and even at times they cause more work. Billy Graham once said this, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. I do believe he wonders why we thought we had the right to determine our course in the first place. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34, we see a passage of scriptures that says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow should take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. You know, as we think about that, many times we plan ahead or are worried about what's going to take place tomorrow and, 
in that verse in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, it, it simply tells us to think about today and be concerned with today and allow God to lead in our lives today. But I want us to, tonight, I almost said this morning, I want us tonight to go to the book of Proverbs. So if you have your Bibles or you have an app on your phone, if you turn to Proverbs chapter 16, Proverbs chapter 16, you know, Proverbs chapter 16, along with the book of Proverbs, is filled with, with wise sayings that give the true perspective of who is in charge of making plans in our lives. So if you would turn or have turned there to Proverbs chapter 16, I'd like us to look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, A man's heart deviseth his ways, but the Lord directeth his steps. I believe that this current time that we're going through, God has used to help slow us down. I believe that's, that's a lot of, of what we see taking place today with families and to bring families closer together. You know, as a whole, we were in a very fast-paced life that for some it seemed in ways, even maybe you're thinking this, of, of even going or, or, or spinning out of control. Well, this whole virus that has taken place and by us being told to stay at home as much as we can has caused us to slow down. I've heard time and time again where families have said our, our children are playing together again or our children are doing this together again or we as a family did this. You know, many of the verses in Proverbs chapter 16 identify that while it is normal for us to make plans, we should recognize that our future plans often may seem right to us but are truly selfish and sometimes lead to bad results. If you're still in Proverbs chapter 16, look at verses 1 and 2. And follow along as I read. The preparations of the heart in man and the answers of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the Spirit. Look down in uh, verse 25, down in verse, or chapter 16 to verse 25. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know, the good news is that God is in the business of, of changing our plans to His plans from time to time. And that results in something many times much better than we could have ever hoped for. This is what he did with his own disciples. And we want to look at some verses in the book of Matthew that talk about some of the things that he did with his disciples and how that he encouraged them. So if you would turn with me to, to Matthew chapter 8. We'll be looking at Matthew chapter 8 and then turning to Matthew chapter 16. But I would like us first to look at Matthew chapter 8. Verses 26 and 27. This is when they were going across the Sea of Galilee. And he calms the winds in the sea. But looking at verse 26. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? We see in this passage of Scripture where the disciples were even looking to the Lord, and as Jesus calmed the seas and calmed the wind, they found, in, and again in verse 27, But the man marveled, saying, or the men marveled, saying, and that was the disciples, what manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? We see how that as we look at plans in our lives and we look at disruptions in our lives, how that God is in control. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 16. Looking again, as we're looking tonight, what happens when our plans have been changed? 
But in Matthew chapter 16, verses 5 through 12, the disciples are still struggling with who Jesus truly is. And Matthew 16 continues with a discussion between Jesus and his disciples. And Jesus is questioning them and asks in verse 13, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, he asked them this question, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? You know, and the disciples, as we read in this passage, the disciples gave, gave some politically correct answers. They gave some answers about the prophets, how the prophets foretold in the Old Testament what would take place and the Messiah was to come. Then Jesus focuses upon their belief to which Peter proclaims to him in verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter recognized that Jesus is the promised Messiah, and he attaches his hopes and his dreams to Jesus. And Jesus affirms this confession and blesses Peter with the purpose and the authority to establish God's church and promise victory over Hades, as we see in verses 16 through verse 19. Follow along as I read. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not re revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in the heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on the earth shall be loosed in heaven. You know, as we read this and see Jesus' statement to Peter, don't you imagine Peter was probably shocked or confused as it goes on in, in verse 21 where Jesus started to predict his death. In verse 21 we see, read, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So upset was Peter with Jesus' talk of, of death that he, he didn't understand at this point that he took Jesus aside to, to actually rebuke him. In verse 22, it says, Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. You know, this reveals the true issues at the center of Whose plans do I operate by? And that's what Peter was doing. Was he thinking of man's thoughts, his own thoughts, or God's thoughts? You know, dealing with change in our plans requires us to have God's thoughts in our focus. It's no wonder Jesus immediately discusses the conditions of discipleship with all his followers at this point. He insists if anyone has the plan to follow him, in verse 24, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You know, following Jesus requires a change in our plans. We must be willing to let go of our own desires and plans and daily surrender to him and allow his will to be done in our lives. You know, while one's salvation is secure through our Savior, Jesus, the struggle to make Jesus Lord is a constant giving up our plans for God's plan. We must daily fill and focus. I think focus is an important word here. To focus our minds with God's thoughts, including His plans for our lives. That is why when God changes our plans, we must refocus our minds asking what is God's plan and not mine. When we allow God to have control of our lives, there is less grief when we experience a change in plans. As we live with hope, knowing God's best is coming, 
even when those plans don't feel good or seem best, we know that God is in control. You know, many of our plans have been changed over these past few weeks and months, and, or the past month and even days. You know, so when God changes our plans, look for His blessings of something new and unexpected. You know, as I've been talking to people, as I call people, they tell me about how that the Lord has showed this to them in their life or has changed something in their life and how that they're praising God for that. We need to remember that God's grace is sufficient to carry us into His next steps for our lives. You know, as we get back to that time which is somewhat normal life and you know our normal life probably from here on out will be somewhat different we need to be willing to pray we need to be willing to look to the Lord for his guidance in our lives we need to be willing to look to God for his wisdom and direction rather than looking as we may have in the past at its at a selfish way In that way, as we look to the Lord, it only comes by allowing Him to have first place in our life. And knowing that when plans change, God has something better for us through His plans. You know, we think of God's plans and sometimes we get pretty anxious. Maybe you've been praying about something in your life. Maybe you've been praying about something that has changed in your life. And you may be thinking even right now... I, I, I don't know where God is. Well, God is right beside you. And these plans that have been changed, these plans that are coming anew in our lives, come in His timing. Allow us to allow Him to work in our lives. You know, going back to Peter's rebuke to Jesus, had he, Peter, had his way, his plan, we would not have the opportunity of salvation and power over sin and death. Easter would have just been another Sunday. God knows best. Jesus obeyed His Father's will and made a way for us. Wouldn't you think we should trust the One who loves us and always has our best in mind? That's the plan and mind of God. It may not be what we thought our plan was early on, and how that this virus has changed many of our plans. But it's time as Christians, as Christ followers, to allow God's plan to work in our lives. Let's have a word of prayer in closing. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time together tonight. We thank you for the passages of Scripture that we looked at in Proverbs, again, which talks about how that you know each and every part about us. And dear Lord, help us to not become selfish with our plans. Help us to allow you to work and to guide in our lives and direct our paths. And dear Lord, as plans have been changed, and I know many were planning on birthdays and times where families get together and graduation and sporting events, and so many things that have been canceled now. Dear Lord, we just pray that we would be looking to you for guidance. And dear Lord, we ask for protection again for our families. Many of us have not been able to see our, our grandchildren or our children for a number of weeks now. The only way we've seen them is through maybe our phones or, or being able to video chat with them or however it is through technology. But dear Lord, we pray for their protection. And we pray, dear Lord, as this comes to an end at some point and we go back to, to living our normal lives or what will be normal at that time, I pray that we look to you. And when our plans get changed, dear Lord, we know that allowing you to have first place in our lives and knowing, allowing you to have part in our plans or control of our plans, we know that we will realize the best for us. And dear Lord, help us with our families. Help us as husbands and wives to be willing to look to you for guidance in our family. And dear Lord, we thank you for our time, this midweek service, to again look at your word. And dear Lord, as we, each one, including myself, 
look at plans that have been kind of changed or things that we've been looking at in the future. Dear Lord, help us to look to you for guidance and direction and most of all for wisdom. We thank and praise you for who you are. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.